<laughs> Welcome back to Don't Just Sit There, Do Something for climate science, news, and easy ways to help. I'm your host, Joylette Portlock, and this is the first part of a two-part special on methane. Of course I know what methane is. It's a colorless, odorless, flammable gas that is the main constituent of natural gas. But no more fart jokes this time, I'm on to you. In the US, we produce a lot of gas. Hey! and burn it in power plants to make electricity, in our gas stoves, furnaces, water heaters, and even in some vehicles. Right, right, natural gas burns cleaner than oil and coal, and it doesn't coat sea creatures or cause black lung, but it's still a fossil fuel. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, carbon dioxide from burning natural gas is about a fifth of our country's total climate pollution. But isn't carbon dioxide found in nature? The Supreme Court ruled in 2007 that several compounds that trap heat, including carbon dioxide, are damaging the public health and welfare and are therefore subject to EPA regulation as pollution under the Clean Air Act. I'm making some right now. <sighs> Putting too much of something in the wrong place where it hurts people is the textbook definition of pollution. And getting natural gas out of the ground, especially through hydraulic fracturing or fracking, causes many contamination problems to our land, air, and especially our water. Despite a cool year so far in the northeastern United States, almost everywhere else has been hot. 2014 has had the hottest summer ever recorded globally in one of the hottest years so far. We got those pollution regulations yet? Methane also traps heat and is one of the most important short-lived climate pollutants. Wait, so natural gas is a fossil fuel and a climate pollutant? Yes, it's also carbon-based. Methane's structure is one carbon atom plus four hydrogen atoms, where carbon dioxide is one carbon plus two oxygen. Slow down there, Bill Nye. How about we just say methane, the other carbon pollution? In the air, methane transforms into carbon dioxide in about 10 to 20 years, which is bad enough. But before that, methane is much better than carbon dioxide at trapping heat and is thus much worse for the climate. How much worse could it be? For those first couple decades, about 80 times worse. I assume we're not just spewing it into the air. From the time we pull the natural gas out of the ground to the time it's compressed, transported, and finally used, there are many points where it can and does escape, wasted into the air. Okay, but oil and gas companies probably self-regulate that part pretty well, right? I mean, that's climate damage and a waste of money, too. Did you just cut to crickets again? You cut to crickets again, didn't you? Fugitive natural gas leaks waste enough fuel for 3 to 30 million homes each year. The oil and gas sector is our biggest source of methane pollution. New evidence released in September confirms that hundreds of private water supplies in Pennsylvania have been contaminated with methane from leaky wells. Water you can set on fire should really not be a thing! The good news is that the technology to deal with these leaks already exists. Several states are already leading the way. Colorado now directly regulates methane pollution from oil and gas operations. The Obama administration, with support from the environmental community, suggested a strategy to better deal with this methane pollution back in March. The other big man-made contribution to methane pollution is from industrial agriculture. Large animals like cows produce methane in the form of <coughs> burps and farts. <coughs> Hey, maybe there's another reason we call it natural gas. The fart jokes were serious? There's actually enough cow farts and burps to make a difference? Mostly burps. But yes, one cow can produce more than a half pound of methane a day. And with close to 90 million cows in the U.S., livestock are our second biggest source of methane pollution. And there are also landfills where decaying trash produces methane. Sometimes it's captured for other uses and sometimes not. And old coal mines can produce methane too. And we'll be talking more about methane in part two. But for now, here are two easy actions to help. Don't just sit there, do something. First, whether it's gas or electric, make your oven more efficient instantly. Don't preheat until you have to. Preheating your oven first means you could be using twice as much energy as you need. Either don't preheat at all, or turn the oven on with just a few minutes of prep time left. Having the oven on longer is probably just a trade-off in money spent heating the house. Your oven is a really inefficient way to heat your house. Save energy and money by letting your heater do its job, and let the oven do what it's designed for. Secondly, if you want to see less dependence on fossil fuels, take the time to comment in support of EPA's clean power plan to reduce our climate pollution 30% by 2030. This is the first first climate pollution regulation for existing power plants. Yes, this is the third time we've asked you to do this. Because it's really important. But if you've already done that, voice your support for keeping a lid on fugitive methane pollution from the oil and gas industry and protect our air, land, and water. Support some pollution controls and don't preheat until you have to. In other words, don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. 
do something. Next time, join us for the second part of the special report on natural gas, where we're going to talk about the relationship between the man-made sources of methane, the natural sources, and our climate. You can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, YouTube, iTunes, or on the web at djst.tv. So watch again and tell your friends.